The Joe Budden saga continues next. What's poppin'? It's your boy Mike Powers, and this is the Mike Powers Show. Thank you for joining me. We leveling up this year, season two. Indeed, we're moving over to all streaming platforms. So Spotify, Google Play, Apple Music. We're gonna be on all of those joints so you can enjoy the audio. If you like to ride in the car, listen to your boy, I got something for you. Put me on in the background. A better idea when you're about to go to sleep. Don't go to sleep now, but when you're about to go to sleep, just turn this joint on. We're gonna have all the episodes that's fit for podcast material across all platforms. That's coming up very soon. Make sure you tap in immediately. Also, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. For those of you watching right now that's already subscribed, go ahead and hit that bell notification so you won't miss none of this when it drops. And a lot of you watching right now are not subscribed. If you want to see this movement grow, you want to see a real hip hop head covering the culture correctly. You want to see this grow as a platform. You need to subscribe right now. Hit that like button right now and share this with your people. We on the move. And now let's get the show started. Now you might've noticed my thumbnail said something about Joe Budden. That's not the story I'm leading off with today. The way I put together this format is I slide that somewhere in the middle. If you don't appreciate that, please let me know in the comment section if I'm doing this wrong, but I like to give a couple setups and then get to the main thing. So with that being said, I'd be remiss to go any further without mentioning what happened with the Breonna Taylor case. We saw the Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron, Republican who spoke at the Republican National Convention, very good friends with Trump and Mitch McConnell, the leader in the Senate, had one charge of wanton endangerment uh, for one of the three officers involved in the shooting of Breonna Taylor. And that charge was for a bullet that went into her neighbor's apartment. So yeah, you get charges for putting bullets through a neighbor's wall, but you can get no charges for none of the bullets that hit Brianna, causing her death. Of course, Louisville got lit up right behind that. People took to the streets. New York, I believe Philly, Washington, D.C., of course. All around the country, protests have been spreading like wildfire and pressure on that district attorney to release the transcript of the grand jury proceedings. Those calls have grown louder and louder. Attorney Benjamin Crump is on the case, and I'm here to say we not gonna stop talking about this until we see those transcripts some may say why aren't you doing a whole show about this it's a lot being said about this already There's a lot of people out there talking about this i'm gonna leave it to them to get much deeper into the details but let's be real between me and you wouldn't we know what happened this is a continuation of the disparate treatment we receive from the criminal justice system from the police department from state local and federal governments so it's no need for me to preach to the choir to tell you over and over again how bad this is. Let's move on this and say her name. All right, we got a new segment coming up and many new segments in the near future will be arriving on this platform. This one is called The Hit List. Just gonna talk to you a little bit about some of the albums that have dropped recently that I think you might wanna check out. The Fix Tape by The Cloth. That's a deep ass crew. Sort of reminds me of the Wu-Tang Clan with how many guys they got in that crew. Led by Riggs. You saw the interview here. If you didn't, go back and check that one out. Uh, Rob Gates, Illinois, Mav, Mooch. All these guys. I, I can't remember everybody's name off the top of my head. Forgive me. It was the same thing when Wu first came out. It took me six months to get everybody named down pat. But the cloth is the truth. I listened to the Fix Tape album. It's dope as hell. Go get that. Jay Nice and Rush Fly Art, which also features Rock Marciano and Willie the Kid, classic album. Go check that out immediately. Nas's King's Disease turned out to be a better than solid project. I scored it very high. It's got mad replay value. Go cop that. Shout to Nas, my, the number one on my list of all time. And then of course my brother G4 Jag with Progression. Got to go listen to that joint. It's the sleeper hit of the fall. Believe me when I tell you, it's some introspection on there. It's a lot of keeping it real on there. It's mad bars on there. The beats is crazy. So go peep that. And that was the hit list. So I follow TK Kirkland, the comedian on IG. Dude is mad funny, keeps it real. Some off color advice for the men and the ladies. It's a good follow if you're not following TK already. Well, you know, he recently appeared on Mike Tyson's podcast, Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson. And things got a little sticky. You look at a guy like me at this stage of my life, I'm doing good. Got a couple of hundred million dollars properties and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. 
and I hate myself. No, I know you don't. Look at you, nigga. You look at you, know look you, at you nigga. Look at you. You gonna tell me how I feel about myself? Come nigga. on, really? Who are you, nigga? Who are you to tell me? Who are you, period? No, well, this uh, is well, who I am. Right, I respect this that. This is who I but am. But me and you go so way I back. I know, but listen, you. this is just some people have. You don't know what I've seen. That's so true, though. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah, I haven't yeah. walked in your shoes. You're yeah. absolutely right. That shit was awkward to say the least. And dude was shook, too. Hey, y'all see Teddy Riley over there in the corner? Looking for an escape route real quick. And then TK, once the internet got a hold of it and called it exactly like it was, that he was shook like a motherfucker, he went on IG and tried to do damage control. Try to make it seem like, nah, it wasn't really like that and people blowing shit out of proportion. Nigga, you were scared. Admit the shit you were scared. There ain't no shame in being scared of Mike Tyson. It's Mike Tyson. Because I know you're not suggesting that you could have did something about it or shit would have went left. So just say what it is. Me personally, I'd have been like, yo, Mike, let me go down to Cheesecake Factory and get you a hamburger or something because you look angry. Or at least through a stick or something to see if that nigga might chase it. He was like, but man, you go so way I back. Know, nigga, what the fuck that got to do with the price of tea in China? Man, you was about to be Mike's bitch in that little ass box. You better be lucky you reacted the way you did or else we would have had a video of Mike folding you up into a pocket square instead of the video we got with you on camera negotiating for your life. Yeah, you was negotiating for your life. But man, you go so way I back. Know. Trying to get that nigga to see you as a human being and not a target. Oh, we go way back ass nigga. He's just jokes. Maybe corny, they just jokes. I love TK Kirtland. And make sure you go check out his IG. Shit's lit. And even though we all know that the current president bungled the response to the world's most ferocious pandemic. We are slowly but surely trying to get back out into the world. But be careful when you go out there because a lot of us been cooped up a long time and cats might not know how to react when they come across real people in real life. Speaking of hot boxing. Wow. That's the first one. That's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh my God. Third time. Second. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, this is the final that's fourth. This is the fourth time he comes in. Yeah, look. The <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Yo, is you for real? Like, if he doing this shit in public, imagine what this dude is doing behind closed doors. I mean, that's like, wait, disgusting. You all under her crotch. She's sweating her butt off, quite literally. Her undergarments is getting moist. Your nose is right close to her private. Matter of fact, I'm about to go get me a Planet Fitness membership right now. Now, come to think of it, do I can get in shape? Get your mind out the gutter, man. Now, a lot of people have been trying to get their hustle on out of necessity due to being either furloughed or altogether let go from their job during quarantine. Great opportunity for everybody to become their own boss. You're looking at one of them. A lot of these guys are doing fashion out here. I support some of these cats. I try to support the young brothers coming up in the marketplaces. I would expect them to support me. Sometimes these avant-garde fashion ideas might go a little bit too far. Bruh, what is you doing? I can tell by your face that you're being held against your will. Who making you do this shit? Is this an audition for a Young Thug video? Now, how crazy is this back and forth going to get between the black community and the police? This thing been escalating all summer into the fall, showing no signs of letting up. Now, there's a new wrinkle in the story between the relationship between the police and the community. Apparently, in Buffalo, if you caught wearing BSF gear, black soprano family, that is, all of a sudden, now you gang affiliated. Somebody from the town texted Benny, that somebody out there wearing a BSF hoodie was arrested on a parole violation because the city of Buffalo, or maybe the parole department or the police department has designated BSF a gang organization. This goes right into the column of the continued criminalization of hip hop. Dudes trying to do their best to get out the hood that made it out, made it worldwide, and the people that's on the ground support these guys, look up to them, and find inspiration in this kind of movement. And you're just gonna arbitrarily take their apparel and label it as gang affiliated? I feel like this is retribution for the movement that's going on nationwide. And we know there's some very specific things going on in Buffalo where people are actually speaking out. I feel like the police know who Griselda is, and they don't like to see these young black men get 55 times the paycheck that these dudes is getting. And this is a way to say, okay, if we can't touch Benny, Wes, Conway, and these guys, if we catch you walking around with their gear on, we're just going to charge you and get you some more time. It's bullshit. And if you're in Buffalo right now, because I have not followed this story as it has progressed, make sure you reach out to the legal aid department out there. ACLU and anybody else that's willing to listen because what we ain't gonna do, we're not gonna let the authorities relabel our entrepreneurs and the people that support them as being part of a gang.
ironic in the fact that the people pointing the finger at BSF and the people wearing their gear is part of the biggest gang this country has ever seen. And now for a Mike Powers commercial break. Don't go nowhere. These is my commercials. I think you're going to like it. I'll see you on the other side. Look who's shopping at Food Lion. When I come home to North Carolina, I try to relax, shoot a few hoops with my friends, and enjoy a nice, cold Coca-Cola classic. And there's no better place to buy Coke than at Food Lion. With Food Lion's extra low prices, anyone can save money on their total food bill. Like to say, it's not how much you make, it's how much you save. Now this could be a three-pointer. So pick up some Coke and shop at Food Lion. And tell them Michael sent you. And welcome back to the show. Hey, did your moms ever tell you if you get into a fight with somebody, grab a rock, a brick, or a stick, and hit them with anything you can? My mom did too. Yup. Well, this next dude <laughs> listened to his mom's advice and took this shit to a whole different level. Bring them out the house. Oh, see. They own them. Oh. Oh. Nothing with the grill. Oh, oh shit. Oh, 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 oh. Damn. Oh. Now that gives you a new meaning to taking a burger to the face. Oh. You know when it, <laughs> when summertime come, when the weather break, which the weather been broke, but people ain't really been outside like that. So when we first, when black folks, we first get outside, it got to be a cooling down period. Don't come outside for the first two weeks. You know what I mean? Because there's some dudes that's been cooped up and they about to let off. About to let off some aggression. Good good two weeks of ass whooping, stabbing, and shootings. But damn, why Quan always got to fuck everything up? I mean, good luck finding another barbecue grill on Labor Day. You know, it's been a, a very politically charged climate all year long, actually for the past three and a half years. And so as I'm watching my cable news and listening to right wing pundits, I always have to hear that refrain about black people playing the victim and not pulling themselves up by their bootstrap and ready to go to, which is all false, it's bullshit, but this is what they say. I just wanted to right now bring to you an incredible incident that's not involving black people with somebody trying to get over without pulling themselves up by their bootstraps. Check this out. A court in the Capitol, Lublana found that Julie J. Dolcic, 22, had taken out five insurance policies in the year before her injury. She had claimed it happened as she cut branches. Adel Six stood to gain more than $1.16 million in payouts. She now faces two years in prison, while her boyfriend has been given a three-year sentence. Adel Six and a number of relatives were arrested in 2019 after she arrived in hospital with her hand cut off above the wrist. And they left their hand at the house to make sure that the doctor won't go be able to reattach it. She looking at three years in jail right now. My question is, bitch, you ain't never heard of OnlyFans? You could make a stack a day doing donkey punches and dirty Sanchez and shit like that. You know the old saying, don't cut off your hand to spite your insurance company. But think about it. If she could take that kind of pain, I bet you that could take a hell of a beating. And now for the top story of the day, Joe Budden really loves his dogs. Like, nah really loves his dog. Let me try to set this up as best as I can because a lot of this shit I do not follow. Apparently, Sin Santana, who Joe used to be with, and now they're not together no more, confided in a friend of her, somebody that was helping her out maybe professionally and also personally. Joe knows who this person is. I think the person's name is Rocky. And this person let out some details of a conversation between her and Sin. Maybe it was a recording. Like I said, I don't follow this shit like that. I'm just reading about it. And what came out was accusations of Joe Budden beating on sin, but also perhaps even more disturbing, we find out that Joe Budden likes to pleasure his dogs sexually. Now, this is not wild speculation. This is me not taking sin's word for it, or even the reports from the media. I have a better source. <laughs> Basie, it's okay. My guy, right? I'm sorry. It's baby. a girl. We're just using slurs. Don't worry about it. Why do I always want to make the dog feel good by playing with their fucking privates? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they like that. They <laughs> fucking beastie they alley. Really protect stop, the animals. Stop, stop, stop raping See, my that, dog. That's how I know that he's not a real animal uh, lover. Because I don't play with my pets. Anybody with a pet 
You come on, you did a little something down there, man. Made your dog feel good. <laughs> Hell no. I've never done that. Well, you've never <laughs> Hold up, so this dude is at the house jacking off Skippy. And see, for me, the mind wanders. And if you got kids, get them out the room right now, please. Because you're not engaging in intimate acts with an animal. That's not even us. But okay, that's what you doing. You admitted to it. What else you doing? Is there foreplay involved? Like oral? Is is the dog even a male? Is it a female? What is Joe doing in the house when he when he goes in the in the bedroom to grab that condom? Who is he grabbing it for? You I'm not taking it too far. It's a natural process progression but then Charlemagne end up getting into the mix and adding his two cents to it well you're massaging another body part <laughs> yeah, i don't know who it was either but it is no different than <laughs> you're a massaging muscle. another body part yeah. what do you do to a dog constantly with ever ask without ever asking pet it mm. you just pet in another mean, part of the dog okay. what do you do with the dog come yo what's up with these dudes man no let's let, seriously let's just let's talk about why all of this might be happening to joe budden right now so joe budden came out and said he was splitting from Spotify. I think he's been there a couple of years. You know, he was on YouTube. He got the deal with Spotify. He went over there. Shout out to Joe. I like the show. Maul, Rory, Parks, all that. But then all of a sudden, it seemed like Spotify started coming after him. Charlemagne has some shit to say about him. It seemed like, and then this story comes out with all of this disgustingness to it. The timing of it of all of this is very important because Joe is a guy that says he's going to own his own network. And he's just launched that recently. So was this an attempt by the powers that be in Hollywood, the same people that got Kanye all messed up right now, are these forces moving against Joe Budden in an attempt to crush him because he won't play ball with the machine? See, when we try to go get our own shit, this is what happens. Now, far be it for me to defend a dog fucker or even a dog fondler. But just on the on the tip of a business, the shit was like clockwork. So to me, it's something very suspicious going on about this whole situation, the motivation behind all of this stuff coming out. And let me say that Sin came out and said, yo, anybody trying to come against Joe Budden and using my family drama as a way to get at Joe, I'm not with that. She did a very stand up thing. I don't know that Joe has come out and addressed the dog molestation claims. I don't know. What I don't want to do is have to go to Google and type in Joe Budden dog sex to find out. So if you know how this thing was resolved or if Joe came out and said, yo, this was all a joke, please let me know in the comments section because I'm quite frankly mad confused that a brother with his kind of standing in hip hop journalism and the career that he had as a hip hop artist would go on camera and readily admit that he jacked his dog off. And I wonder how many times I could use the phrase dog jacking before YouTube decides to ban this video for life. And I just have to say, if this whole thing is true, Joe, the Me Too movement is in full effect. Now fine, we could put a leash on our dog and walk up down the street and tell him to sit and all of that shit is perfectly acceptable. But that shit you described is rape. I don't condone sexual relations between a man and his pet. But if you going to do it, get consent, my nigga. Whichever one of the three holes you decide to explore. Ask Snowball if that shit is cool first. Nigga, this ain't about y'all dogs. And you and Charlemagne running around talking about y'all doing this to relax your dog. Y'all some freaks. And in my feel good story of the day, hip hop recently turned 47 years old. That's right. So let's talk about it. Let's go through the history. On August 11th, 1973, DJ Cool Herc and his sister, Cindy, threw a party in the Bronx at their building, which is now a landmark. At 1520 Sedgwick Avenue, Herc tried out a new technique where he rotated two copies of the same record. It was a way to extend a short section of music so that people could dance longer. As one record ended, he cued the second record and repeated the process. This technique, and that party became the blueprint for what we call hip hop today. It wasn't called hip hop just yet, but the founding five elements, DJing, breaking, MCing, graffiti, and beatboxing were swiftly emerging as a unique culture. So long story short, it's 47 years old. Some people might think that's a very long time. It's not. That's in my lifetime. I was around when Rappers Delight come out. The first tape I bought. One was Michael Jackson Thriller. The other was Run DMC's very first album. I went to the Fresh Fest concert with Run DMC, uh, Fat Boys, Houdini, 
all these cats. We came all the way. And them trying to call this a fad and just dismiss it as something that these young black people was doing in the street that wasn't going last. All the way to taking this thing all around the globe, to selling out arenas, to becoming the predominant cultural force on the planet. That's hip hop. We invented that. It came from the streets. It started in New York. Salute to Cool Herc. Salute to New York. Salute to the boroughs. Salute to upstate. Because upstate is holding this down right now. 47 years old, but we got a long way to go. We can continue to evolve. We can continue to grow. We can continue to influence the planet. We can continue to make positive change. But what we must begin to do is protect this art form from the vultures from the companies that will seek to come in and suck you dry for everything that you worth. You gotta learn how to monetize this thing to feed your families. So these guys is up and coming right now. They're starting to make some noise. They're starting to make some bread. I wanna see these dudes be able to retire off of this thing called hip hop. It used to be a song out there, hip hop save my life. And I'm sure many of us, including myself, those of you watching me at home, and a lot of the spitters that you love would echo that sentiment. So thank you hip hop. Thank you, Cool Herc. Thank you for connecting with me. And now go connect with each other. Other than that, I'm Mike Powers. I'm out.